Helen Sugabe, and I was born in Beirut, Lebanon. I live here in Washington, D.C. now, and I practice my art here. I think that I want a dialogue. Ultimately, I want a dialogue to happen with my work. I want people who don't know about the Arab world to ask a question or two, or to begin to think about East and West in a different way. And um, not as, no, we're not very different after all. I am so excited and so proud, first of all, to be in the exhibition, to be selected, be in the Library of Congress on view, and then to have um, my silk screen as the part of the invitation and the announcement for the show, it's huge. When we left from the war and my father was transferred to Paris and being in Paris and that city with all the paintings and museums that I would just uh, go around to and sit for hours and um, got a lot of solace from that on these artists that I had grown up uh, learning about and then I knew really that I wanted to become an artist and study art. And unbelievably, though I took it so for granted, well, just have our portfolio review at the Louvre Museum on a bench there in the middle of the museum. Later on I thought, wow, that was pretty amazing. <laughs> and I got in. <laughs> yeah, I, I got accepted. <laughs> so then I came to study art at Syracuse. I selected um, this piece with Picasso and Guernica, his signature uh, war painting, his signature painting on war, actually, as it's turned out. And he painted it in 1937, um, after the bombing of the Basque village, Guernica. It was in his studio, and evidently, uh, an anecdote about it was that a, a German official came to see the painting. He had heard about it. And he came into Picasso's studio and he said, oh, so you did this. And Picasso turned around to him and said, no, you did this. And I thought, how appropriate and right on, because he, as an artist, is responding to what's going on. And I feel that is exactly what I'm trying to do as well. Not nearly like Guernica, but we're both trying to um, get the world's attention on man's inhumanity to man. And so for me, Guernica was the piece that I wanted to choose to talk about. Well, I was invited by George Mason University and Navigation Press to um, do a silkscreen with a master uh, silkscreen printer, Sarah Dolan and Helen Frederick. And they came to my studio and they had seen that I had been painting these little shoes, little children's shoes. And they thought that this would be such an important piece to uh, work into the silk screen. And just prior to me doing the, the artist in residency there, the little boy, Alan Curdy, um, was washed up on the beach. And it was an especially poignant, um, hard time, and very emotional for all of us working on this piece because he had just died. He, his little shoes were still on him um, on the beach. And for me, the shoes are so important, such an important symbol for me and my work from a long time ago. I, I, it, as you say, it's a recurring motif in my work. Um, I think that they represent um, um, a certain amount of power and dignity. And um, when you want to run away from something bad, you put your shoes on. And when you want to run towards something, you put your shoes on. My sister when we were running out of our flat, breaking curfew in Lebanon, um, she lost her shoe. And um, I, I don't know, it just have been, has been something important to me to use as a symbol um, also of innocence. And um, in this case, also hope too, with the patterns and the colors um, that are so important. In Zatari camp in Jordan, one of the largest refugee uh, camps for Syrians, the first thing that they did was give the children a pair of shoes, um, apart from anything else. 
as a sign of dignity and respect to those children. And I just thought that was so fascinating. Um, this is called Unfinished Journeys um, because the, their journey has not com been completed. And it could be read in both ways, as, as a physical journey, as an emotional journey, um, also journey that has been cut off as well. Um, you, they're mismatched on purpose. He didn't have time to tie his shoelaces. Um, and on the other hand, the selection of the blue and the gold and the kind of stitching that I've done um, is also important um, as a sort of prayerful uh, place to be. And his shoes down here as if you would be entering into a, a sacred space. Um, so you can think about who this war is impacting and who the people that are suffering from the war, children and women, So, which is very important to me. It's part of a larger body of work called Arab Spring, which I still use that, uh, that phrase from 2000 and um, late 2010, after I finally returned to Lebanon and Syria and Jordan. And my father was born in Damascus, of course. And so, uh, you know, we had seen all these places just before coming back here for the first time for me in 35 years. And then the quote unquote Arab Spring began. And subsequently, the last three years have been focused on the Syrian migration, specifically as a result of the civil war and the mass exodus of people, which, you know, quite frankly, has impacted the whole world. Um, Till today, it's the largest 13 million migration um, in such a short period of time. And um, it's had a, a really great effect on, uh, on Europe, the Middle East, Lebanon, here. So um, I, I feel that it's important to keep talking about this issue. It certainly affects this country as well here, southern borders and so on and so forth till now and seems to be continuing as well. In my choice of colors and patterns, and for me, the idea of beauty is also innate in human beings. We, we, we search it out, we look for it, we respond to it. Um, I respond to it, so I feel that part of what I wanna do is create something beautiful, still retaining a message, but at least I bring the, the viewer to my work to hear what I want, to see and hear what I want to say to them, as opposed to um, pushing them away by very strong subject matter that they might be inclined to turn away their head. In this case, this is a silk screen, an 11 color silk screen, um, which evidently was quite difficult for the master printer to do. She had bad dreams about my shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, um, but it, it very, I mean, in terms of technical skill, she is a master and the registration, I didn't know it would be that bad of a task for her, but um, anyhow, it is 11 colors there and, um, and quite a process to go through the silk screen. In general, I don't do silk screens. I mostly use gouache in my work. So I'm mostly a painter. If I were king of the world, you know, and had a magic wand and I could make everything good, I would, and I can't. And so little by little, even unwittingly, I can only use my voice visually and that's what I know how to do. And so I have become much more conscious and committed to talking about what's going on around me. And um, a lot of it isn't very good. And so, especially in the Middle East. And so I don't wanna be like thinking always negatively on that, but I also, on the other side, I wanna portray um, real people and not just numbers and horrible things as well too so that element of beauty creeps in too I think that I want a dialogue ultimately I want a dialogue to happen with my work I want people who don't know about the Arab world to ask a question or two or to begin to think about 
east and west in a different way and um, not as no we're not very different after all and um, so I think ultimately I, I really it sounds trite but I would like that understanding and that dialogue and that respect for both for both sides so that's what I hope <laughs>